Widely regarded as one of the top tourist destinations in Southeast Asia, Singapore boasts some of the most luxurious hotels, historic cultural attractions, and awe-inspiring landscapes. The Lion City is home to the largest rooftop infinity pool, the world's first safari park for nocturnal animals, centuries-old temples, and of course, some of the best food on the planet. I've compiled my list of 10 things you must do when visiting Singapore for the first time. Number one, Marina Bay Sands. Marina Bay Sands stands out as an extraordinary architectural masterpiece. First opened in 2011, Marina Bay Sands has established itself as one of Singapore's most iconic attractions. You can opt to stay at the luxury 55-storey hotel, shop until you drop, or soak up a little art and culture at the Art Science Museum. At the Sands Sky Park, be prepared to be wowed by the 360 degree views. Enjoy the breathtaking and panoramic vista, 57 levels above the heart of the city by booking a ticket for the observation deck between 11 a.m. the latest entry at 8.30 p.m. at a cost of 32 Singapore dollars. There is limited capacity each day, so I would advise to book up in advance to avoid disappointment. Non-resident visitors can access only part of the observation deck which sits above the three towers. The rest, including the beautiful infinity pool, are reserved for hotel residents. The view from here is absolutely incredible. You get to see gardens by the bay and the impressive super tree grove, as well as all of Singapore's iconic landmarks. I recommend coming in the late afternoon so you can get there during the sunset and see Singapore during the day and night, you'll get the most amazing photos. The entrance to Marina Bay Sands Sky Park is at the exterior of Tower 3. Marina Bay Sands is located at 10 Bayfront Avenue in the heart of Singapore's business district. You can get there by MRT train. Marina Bay Sands is linked to CE1 and DT16 Bayfront Station on the Circle Line and Downtown Line, respectively. Two, Gardens by the Bay. Gardens by the Bay is a hugely popular tourist attraction in Singapore, and rightly so. The breadth of the plants and the creative ways in which they're displayed is awe-inspiring. In one part of the conservatory, the cloud forest mimics the cool, moist ecology of the tropical highlands. It has a treetop walk and much photographed indoor 114 foot waterfall. Gardens by the Bay is a large fantasy land of misty biodomes, high tech super trees and whimsical sculptures. The super trees burst into light for the Garden Rhapsody show twice each evening. This is a great destination both for kids and grown ups and simply for those looking for a peaceful walk with stunning views. It can be hot and humid, however, there are places where you can shelter from the blistering sun and grab some refreshments. This tourist hotspot is open daily from 9am to 9pm and the outdoor gardens are open daily from 5am to 2am. Tickets can be purchased online in advance for the various attractions. The Gardens by the Bay compound is easily accessible by public transport with a number of MRT metro stations nearby. The closest MRT station is Bayfront Station, CE1, DT16 lines. Take exit B and keep walking along the underground linkway. Once you exit, cross the Dragonfly Bridge or the Meadow Bridge to in get inside the Gardens by the Bay. Three, Merlion Park. The promenade overlooking Marina Bay is home to Singapore's iconic 28-foot merline statue, half fish, half lion stone carving that shoots water into the bay. 
The fish symbolises Singapore's beginnings as a fishing village, while the lion head is a nod to Singapore, which means Lion City in Malay. Erected in 1972, it remains one of the nation's most popular tourist attractions. Originally located at the mouth of the Singapore River, it was built by a local craftsman and unveiled by the then Prime Minister. With the completion of the Esplanade Bridge in 1997, the statue can no longer be viewed clearly from the waterfront and was relocated to Merlion Park, which stands in front of the Fullerton Hotel overlooking Marina Bay. On the 28th of February 2009, the Merlion struck, uh, statue was struck by lightning. Staff in the vicinity said they heard an explosion followed by a loud thud when broken pieces fell into the ground. Repairs were completed in March that year. There are a few different MRT stations that you could use to get to Merlion. Get either the North-South Line or the East-West Line and alight at Raffles Place MRT Station, which is the closest. The Mer Line is just a five minute walk from here. Four Botanical Gardens. Established in 1859 by the Agri-Horticultural Society, 60 acres of land were transformed from a disused plantation into a popular recreational garden you see today. As well as being a favourite recreation venue for jogging, dining or just lazing about, the sprawling grounds are also le a leading centre for botanical and horticultural research. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is carved into three main areas. The Tangling Core is the oldest and the one visitors see first as they pass through the historic Tangling Gate. The Trisol Gallop Core is integrated into the park's existing rainforest and the Batuk Tamir Core is the home of a children's garden complete with tree houses, suspension bridge and a farm. Visit the National or Orchid Garden to see more than a thousand species of orchids and 2,000 hybrids on display. The scenic Swan Lake is the home for numerous species of aquatic plants and fishes and is named as such because of a pair of mute swans that glide grace gracefully across the lake. Singapore Botanic Gardens is free to explore except for the National Orchid Garden which costs 15 Singapore dollars admission. Getting there is easy with access from MRT either at Napier Station or Botanic Gardens Station. 5. Raffles Hotel A visit to the Long Bar at Raffles Hotel to sip their world-famous Singapore Sling Cocktail has been a feature on my bucket list for many years. I'm pleased to say that this experience has now been crossed off as completed. Named after Sir Stanford Raffles, the founder of Singapore, the hotel has welcomed countless legendary names throughout its history. And among the many luminaries are Roger Kipling, Elizabeth Taylor, Somerset Maugham, Ava Gardner and Noel Coward. At the time when global travel was a luxury, available only to a select few, the stories of these personalities shared by fact and fables contributed to the Raffles' renown. Thanks to them and the myriad of other guests over the decades, the Long Bar's Singapore Sling gained international fame along with exciting tales such as the one involving a tiger in the bar and billiard room. In 1902, the last tiger was killed in Singapore was pursued at Raffles Hotel. The tiger escaped from the performing circus at the far end of Beach Road, went for a swim and cowered in the bar and billiard room to rest for the night. A member of staff saw the tiger, requested the help of a headmaster who was known to be a hunter and a sharpshooter. It was dark and with his loaded gun, he fired three missed shots at the tiger. The right opportunity for him to redeem his reputation came when he caught the gleaming eyes of the tiger. He fired a shot right between his eyes. The, as bystanders approached the body, the tiger's head rose and the headmaster pulled his trigger, killing the tiger. 
No stay in Lion City would be complete without a visit to this iconic hotel. Shortly following its opening in 1887, Raffles has seen as a beacon and a haven for world travellers arriving from the shores to experience its exquisite combination of grandeur and charm. Today, the hotel continues to embody regal elegance and old world appeal. In the city where modern buildings compete to touch the sky, this beautifully preserved colonial style treasure declared a national monument in 1987 takes pride of place in the vibrant civic and business district. 6. Chinatown I was fortunate enough to base myself in the lively Chinatown district during my stay in Singapore and I really enjoyed my experience. Once an enclave for Singapore's Chinese immigrant population, the Chinatown of today is a blend of old and new, with historic temples sitting alongside award-winning bars and restaurants. You'll be able to spend the entire day exploring this vibrant district which is the only Chinatown in the world to boast a Buddhist temple, mosque and Hindu temple along a single street. The Buddha Tooth Relic Temple and Museum is a Tang-styled Chinese Buddhist temple that's design is inspired by the Buddhist mandala, a symbol of Buddhist culture that represents the universe. Admission to this enchanting temple is free. Visitors looking to immerse themselves in Singapore's rich, multi-ethnic culture will find no better place than Chinatown. The lively markets, hawker centre and street art make Chinatown a colourful place to spend time discovering its charm and allure. To get there, head for Chinatown MRT station, which is an interchange station connecting the northeast line and the downtown line. 7. Changi Airport It might seem odd to tell travellers to hang out at an airport, but Changi is no ordinary airport. The transportation hub is also a nature-themed shopping, dining and entertainment extravaganza designed by the architect Moisha Safdi. The project's highlights include a rain vortex, a seven-storey tall indoor waterfall, an indoor forest with suspended walkways and nearly 300 stores. It is so popular that 20 airlines will let you check in a full 24 hours in advance just to maximise your time inside. To really explore all that the airport has to offer, you should allow at least three hours and possibly more. Jewel is a nature-themed entertainment and retail complex linked to one of the passenger terminals of Changi Airport. It is here you'll find most of the attractions and where you should head for. You'll discover a mirror maze, hedge maze, bouncing nets, canopy park and bridge, forest valley, experience studio and the famous world's tallest indoor waterfall. At the Jewel, you'll find major brand retail outlets including Pokemon, Adidas, Timberland, Apple, Pandora, Nike, Lacoste, Oakley and Zara as well as a wealth of food options. To get to Changi Airport, take the east-west line to Tana Mura MRT station and transfer to the Changi Airport MRT station. Alternatively, take the downtown line to Expo MRT station then transfer to Changi Airport MRT station. There are three buses running between the dual complex and the airport terminal buildings. Eight, eat at a hawker centre. Singaporeans enjoy a wide variety of food at affordable prices. Hawker centres are an indispensable feature of the Singaporean way of life, offering numerous cuisines. There are many hawker centres to choose from, including Newton Food Centre, which is a buzzing hawker centre that has long been one of the island's most popular eating spots with close to 100 hawker stalls. One of my personal favourites is the Maxwell Food Centre, which is nestled in a storied neighbourhood of pre-war houses and various places of worship. It is located at the foot of An Siang and Club Street. Other hawker centres to try include a Moist Street Food Centre, Hong Lim Market and Food Centre, Lu Pa Sat, Teka Centre, Adam Road Food Centre, 
Old Airport Road Food Centre and Tiong Bahu Market. 9. Fort Canning Park Fort Canning Park is an iconic hilltop landmark that has witnessed many of Singapore's historical milestones. It is where the Malay royal family once ruled in medieval times, where the British decided to surrender to the invading Japanese during World War II, and more recently, some of the world's biggest music acts have played here. The 18 hectares space has many attractions, from ancient artifacts for history buffs, to outdoor lawns for concerts, and of course greenery for nature lovers. The charming boutique Hotel Fort Canning is also situated here. Fort Canning Park has a lot of green scenery and is a perfect space for nature lovers and walkers. You can take the metro train to Fort Canning Station, Clark Key Station or Dabi Guat Station. If you exit at Fort Canning Station or Dabi Guat Station, take exit B. For exit at Clark Key Station, take exit E. The park is a very short walk from all of these metro stations. 10. Travel on the MRT One of the most popular travel options for visitors to Singapore is the mass rapid transport network. Singapore undoubtedly has one of the best public transportation systems in the entire world. You can expect the MRT to be busy during peak times, but during off-peak times it's awesome and I always manage to find a seat something that isn't very common during my journeys on the London Underground. It is a joy to get about the city using the MRT system, which has more than 140 stations and six lines with further network expansion planned. Trains usually operate from 5.30 through to around midnight. Be aware that no food or drink is to be consumed in MRT trains and stations. The system map is colour coded and signs are in English which makes it easy to follow. You can get a Singapore tourist pass uh, bought at Transit Link ticket office at selected MRT stations. Alternatively, you can just touch in and out of the ticket barriers with your debit or credit card.